Welcome to another episode of Epigram. Today we are at Gravitas with the chef Matt Baker. How are you? Good, how are you? Great, great. So before we start, we want to take, thank you for coming to the event. Uh, it was yesterday, Friday, November 2nd, for the first lecture series for Epigram. So we are expecting to see you in the next one in February. So Matt, let's start talking. Uh, so first of all, we love this space. We saw kind of like your your input from the beginning, setting up all together. This is like kind of like a dream come true for you, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it definitely was a labor of love. Um, Gravitas took me roughly about two years to build, um, a year and a half of active construction. Okay. Um, it's funny, when, when, when we were getting set up and you asked me to plug something in, I remember because on the, on the floor we have an outlet. I dug the hole for the outlet. And so, like, literally, there's all these little aspects of the building that I tried to... Um, I mean, not intentionally, but I had to help out with construction sometimes. But and so, it was just it was just a very long, painful process with construction, and I'm just happy that we're open, happy that we're here, and I'm very happy with how the, everything turned out because I think it's a beautiful building. That's, I agree. It's, it looks great. So going in your background, we we talked earlier like you have been in a lot of different places, yep. very different places like Miami, DC, Chicago, Singapore. Yep. So tell me a little bit of your background, you know, all this, or your passion behind food. Um, so my passion with food started at a young age. Um, my parents were really great about introducing me to a lot of different uh, culturals, uh, cultural foods and cuisines. Um, so it was pretty common for me as a young age to eat in a, in a given week to eat Indian food, sushi, um, traditional steakhouse, uh, Chinese, and so. As a child, I just really loved the culture and loved the ingredients and loved the flavors and, and of different cuisines. Uh, so as I got older and definitely fell in love with, with restaurants and food, I definitely wanted to explore that more. And so um, I was very fortunate that um, while, I was in, uh, while I was in Miami, I just finished up culinary school and I was working for some restaurants in Miami, I got an opportunity to go to Singapore. Okay. And I had a, just a, kind of one of those once in a lifetime opportunities at a young age to, to travel the world and so I jumped all over it and moved there and and really that opened my eyes to all of Asia and so Singapore allowed me to travel to Malaysia, Thailand, China, Indonesia and really see just a lot of different cultures, different cuisines um, and it was just an amazing experience for at such a young age to be able to see all that and all that definitely impacted my what I call you know my, my cooking style today which I call New American which is really just you know traditional French or American driven cuisine with cultural influences from around the globe. That's awesome. So from Singapore, now you're in DC. So what made you like said like DC is my house to develop my restaurant? So as I was finishing up my time in Singapore, I was pretty hell bent on opening my own restaurant. Okay. Uh, it's definitely been something that I've always wanted as uh, especially as I've progressed my career, I've always wanted my own restaurant and, and future restaurants. And so I was trying to actively do that in Singapore, but I was 20, 24 years old at the time, okay. and I made a lot of mistakes. Okay. Mistakes with the planning, mistakes with, with the process, and uh, I had a group of, of a team of investors and a team of uh, partners in the restaurant that I was putting together in Singapore, and I put all my money into it, and it all fell apart. And so we actually never even ended up opening. Uh, I spent about eight months trying to get it off the ground, and it just didn't come together. And so. I kind of knew I needed to come back to the U.S. and, and kind of start fresh, and I didn't want to go into, um, I grew up in Houston, I didn't want to move to Houston, okay. um, so I wanted to try a new city. So I looked at a lot of the major food markets in the, in, the, in the U.S., and a friend of mine was just telling me, he said, listen, D.C. is really um, just waiting for, for talented chefs to open up restaurants. Uh, this is eight years ago, at the time there just wasn't a lot going on from a food standpoint. And so I came out here to visit, and he was right. I saw a lot of opportunity, a lot of pockets that still needed to be filled, and okay. I fell in love with the city. That's awesome. So you're just looking at the place, I have a few questions. Uh, yep. Even looking at the bottles from here and everything. Uh, I, 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 we share something similar in terms of creativity, in terms of design, and, and et cetera. Yeah. As designers, sometimes we like to share stories through our work and design. 
So I, I know that there's so many details involved from the food you taste, the utensils you have, like the contrast between materials, that is like from the door to sit down, yep. to you living here, like, like if you want to like give something of your, yep. your knowledge or something to the people that come here and have that experience. Can you tell me a little bit of behind that? You yeah, know? I mean, I think with Gravitas, one of the, the one of the, I guess the, the main place to start is that I wanted to create a restaurant that allowed me to cook my cuisine, to tell my story on a plate and to, to cook with my creativity and whatever I'm inspired by, whatever I'm, I'm influenced by during that point in time. And that was a big driver for Gravitas, uh, for why I did it. Uh, the other thing is once we start opening Gravitas or once we start planning, I really wanted to have a restaurant that was serious in its food, was fine dining in its food, but I was tired of going to fine dining restaurants and feeling like I had to wear a suit, feeling like I couldn't enjoy myself feeling like I had to go into this sterile environment where you're being pampered by service. It's a new world. And why can't we have fine dining cuisine in a really fun environment, in, a, in a, an environment with a um, building that has historical aspects to it and its own um, personality to it. And so from that standpoint, that's really what drove me to opening Gravitas here because we're in an old tomato packing factory. Uh, it's a former warehouse. Uh, the brick, the glass windows, the steel beams, these are all historic uh, elements that date back all the way to the 1940s. And I wanted to have um, aspects like that in the, in the restaurant uh, that we could build around to give this space some, 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 um, um, some character. That's great. And something that I love right now, while we are talking, I'm hearing, I, I can see that there's not a division between the, the kitchen. Yep and us here talking usually some some other places you know like yeah. uh, like there's like the kitchen is like an in the back of the house and nothing happens on the front but here the kitchen is even exposed it has like one of the best windows to look out <laughs> even you know like uh, yeah. and I, I, I so I, and that was something I wanted to create so I wanted a couple of the qualifying factors I was looking for in the, in the space was I wanted a perfect rectangle okay. and the reason for the rectangle is to create symmetry Okay. So if you look at the dining room, there's a lot of symmetry that happens. Um, okay. And the other aspect of that is by having a rectangle, there is uh, full transparency, start to finish. I didn't want to build any walls. I wanted it to be all open. So when you even walking down the street, as you mentioned, you could be, you know, 50 feet outside of our uh, front door and you can still see into our kitchen. You can see what's happening. Uh, as you walk through the front door, you immediately see what's happening in the kitchen. You immediately see a dining room. And I wanted to create that transparency um, to where Friday night, packed house, kitchens humming, you got deep, chefs are cooking, plating, you got servers pouring wine, people clearing plates, serving plates. I wanted to create that energy from the inside out so you can see that as you're coming. That's awesome. So great. Yeah. So you told me like it, now eight months. You have been four open. months. Four months. Four months. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Eight months in the building, <laughs> four months here. So yeah, I, I have been following you on those on your social media that I would share with you guys on, on, on the channel that all the the involvement of like this empty space and you'd sign at least three years ago yep. in this area. We are in IB City, by the way, uh, that we are neighbors uh, <laughs> and this place keeps like evolving and changing yep. gradually, sometimes fast, sometimes slow. But uh, we can see that definitely is a catch big change place that yeah. this will be something very different in a few years and we yeah. are seeing it right now yeah and that was another reason for why i chose to come to ivy city um yes. there's plenty of other opportunities for restaurant spaces in dc uh for me i wanted to be a part of a neighborhood and when i say a part of a neighborhood i want to be almost like the backbone i want to bring um new life into the community and when I looked at DC, it was, there weren't a whole lot of neighborhoods that we, you had opportunity to do that. And so uh, a lot of people come in to the restaurant and they say, we've never even heard of Ivy City, never even, we've lived in DC for 20 years, never heard of the neighborhood, never been, been here. We get out of the Uber, we're like, where are we? Um, that's cool, because we're bringing people that, into the neighborhood that would have never come otherwise. And we're showing them what, what the city's, what this neighborhood's about and what the community's about. And so um, by us kind of being a beacon, that was really one of my goals uh, for, for, for setting out with Gravitas. Great. 
So I have a question for you. I now talking back to the design and creativity stuff. So I, I have that it intrigues me how you design the perfect menu for your place. <laughs> that takes a long time. This is something that you have since you were in Singapore. I have to have this plate in my in my restaurant. Like yep. there's something that you build up since the beginning. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that's always a something you're always seeking. I don't think it's ever a finished product. Um, I'm the type that I'm always getting ideas. I'm always driven by um, creativity and, and being um, inspired by new things. And so for me, it's sometimes it's difficult just to have a menu and keep it in place. So we change the menu pretty often here uh, okay. by introducing new, new menu items. Um, and to be honest with you, a lot of times there's a dish that I feel really strongly about, but the guest doesn't respond to it or it doesn't deliver the way I thought it would. Um, and then there's sometimes where I put together a dish that I feel like um, is missing something or could be a little bit better or you know for whatever reason we the guests love it and they and they say and so there's dishes on the menu uh, that I've been doing for a few years now that I don't think we could ever take off the menu because people are just obsessed with those dishes and so um, like I said I think it's an ongoing never-ending process of trying to find the perfect menu balance and the perfect the dishes to put on the menu that's great. So uh, another question that I have for you, for example, uh, us as a designer architects, we usually like share a lot of stuff with other architects about yeah. design ideas, materials, uh, furniture, stuff like that. Do you get together with other chefs in the city and, you know, like do some kind of like, I don't know how you say Collaboration. Like, collaboration but more in like a social aspect like I will invite you home or you go to their home or you do stuff like that yeah I mean I would say with chefs it's a lot on the kitchen side like chefs yeah. love to walk through other other chefs kitchens okay um, and they love to ask questions like oh you did you did, you did this type of grill you know in my restaurant I've got this type of grill and it's all kind of like geeky esoteric you know kitchen jargon and, and um, so that's pretty common uh, one thing I do like to do a lot is um, I, I like to eat out. I like to eat at other people's restaurants. Okay, cool. I like to see what they're doing. I like to see what their um, style of service is, what their style of menu is, what their style of decor is, um, especially when we travel. When we travel to new cities, I love to see what chefs in other cities, other markets are doing, okay. especially from a decor aspect. Um, you know, So I, I love to, to draw ideas and inspiration from that because I think – um, from a restaurant decor, furniture, um, overall setup, I think um, there's just a lot of really cool things out there, especially when you look at the international market with uh, with a lot of restaurants in like the UK, a lot of restaurants in Australia. I think there's a lot of really interesting things that are happening. Cool. So Matt, uh, opening a restaurant, yeah, how, how do you do that? Like, uh, what is the process? Take me back there. Like, uh, it's like uh, I can imagine just so after your experience behind it, yep. all the struggle to put something and then open to the public. And the restaurant is your name. Yep. So you're exposing for critiques, yep. for promotions, for everything that yeah. can go behind that. Yeah, I mean, you know, to answer your first question, there's no perfect formula to open your own restaurant. Uh, there's no right way or wrong way to do it. Uh, it's a lot of trial and error and making mistakes and figuring it out and quickly trying to learn from those mistakes. Um, in you know, it, it's a, it is challenging because Gravitas took me two years to, to build. Um, everything from the sound to the lighting to the knife and the glassware has been thought out. I mean, to pick these out took me weeks. Yeah. Uh, to pick these out took me weeks. And uh, restaurants are a very fickle, fickle market. It's a it's a very subjective field. Uh, it's something that people, uh, customers, guests love to um, love to critique. And it's it's you know you know, and I don't think anything can prepare you for that. But you know that as you make that plunge into opening and your own restaurant, you put yourself out there. You're opening yourself up for that, and so um, it's it's definitely a very interesting um, uh, dynamic to to be on that side of the fence where you put so much energy and effort into it, and then so quickly uh, you can have a diner come in and either promote or critique it on uh, a platform such as social media or Yelp or online reviews, and similar to any type of artist, um, you know, you put your blood, sweat, and tears into this, and it's um, you got to have thick skin to be able to to deal with some of the, the things that people say sometimes. And then you also have to go with the highs and 
a lot of people love to promote your restaurant and talk about it and, and we love that and it's you know it, it's always um, nice to be recognized especially with you know all the staff that we have and all the efforts that they put in it's nice that they get recognition as well for all the hard work that they put in and put forward so you know there's no per perfect formula um, you know it's just gotta have thick skin and, 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 and put your head down and try to learn from your mistakes and get better every day for what I read, the reviews are, are great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We try very, very hard. Cool. So talking about that and exposing yourself out there, I, I want to talk a little bit more of like, just tell me a little bit about your kitchen in this restaurant. Mm -hmm. What type of food, uh, food we are going to experience here, uh, you know, for the audience out there yeah. that we want to invite them to come here. So yeah, so, you know, we call, we call what we do New American. That's the style of cuisine we call it. Um, and it's it's really it's my interpretation and, and inspiration of, of traditional flavors, traditional ingredients, um, put forth in, in kind of a modern technique, modern way. And so on our menu at any point in time, you can have a Japanese sashimi with a um, beautiful soy sauce, marin, sesame oil dressing, and and uh, puffed rice and crispy shallots right next to a very um, French driven chicken breast that we stuff with truffles and we roast it and get the skin crispy and just do it with very simple, simply sauteed uh, glazed uh, fall vegetables. So um, I think that's the beauty of Gravitas is that it, it's really my interpretation of, of cuisine at the moment. So um, you have this, this um, r really this wide variety of flavors and dishes on a menu um, and hopefully, hopefully they're all delicious. I think they're all delicious. Um, but uh, it's cool because you get to experience a lot of different flavors in one sitting. That's great. I'm getting hungry. I think <laughs> I'm staying. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. Uh, yeah. Talking about you created this already. This is like one of your goals done. Yep. What is the next step for you? Next step for me. Um, you know, are, you, are we, you planning to open an, a restaurant in another city, or you're planning to stay focused in? DC? I think I'm gonna focus in DC. We do have, I I do have plans to do some more stuff. Um, yeah. So we're trying to be smart and strategic in, in the growth, but um, I do have other things I want to open. Um, the goal would be to hopefully one day, um, you know, spend 10 to 20, 30 years uh, as a chef opening restaurants, and hopefully at the end of it, have, I don't know six to ten restaurants I can be proud of and say that we've opened and are so open and, and are successful so that's the goal uh, easier said than done so um, but yeah I, the next step I don't know the next step we've I've got like I said I've got some ideas and some options that are possibilities and um, so we're just trying to try to make the best decision and in the meantime just working to get Gravitas as good as it can be and working with our team to, to get them um, you know to get them to train as best as possible and, and to put forth the best best product we can. That's great, Matt. So thank you again for for this uh, short interview. But uh, I invite you all to come and and stay tuned because there's a lot of more stuff that Matt is, is cooking right now. Cool. <laughs> so thank you guys. See you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt.